All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 7th um, meeting of the Environmental Sustainability Task Force. And with that, uh, uh, I with the agenda, there were just in the focus groups up updates, um, I had uh, a request to talk a little bit about the Public Transportation Millage Committee. Um, we did get and a couple other things um, that have come through since the agenda went out. Anybody have any um, things that they want to add or discuss? Okay, great. Then um, all in favor of adopting the agenda? Okay, right. okay, by consensus, we'll move along. All right, uh, communications and correspondence. Um, I haven't received anything specific to this committee. Has anyone else had any communications or correspondence? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, public comment, any? Not a peep, I, I have nothing to say tonight. I'm very, very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim, nothing. Okay. It's unusual for you, Rowan. Yeah. Okay, exactly. um, focus group updates, uh, then we'll, um, I, um, Elizabeth, um, yeah, do you wanna just uh, do a little bit on the uh, community energy management grant that you're sure. graciously, <laughs> your first <laughs> effort, yay. <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, Jan asked me if I could kind of, you know, get started with helping out with the um, uh, CEM grant application. And so that the limit on that is $100,000. Um, so it will um, at least lessen the burden on the township in terms of um, what the plan is in terms of replacing the HVAC system with a new um, high efficiency system that correct me if I'm wrong, Jan, what the plan is for high efficiency, low emission geothermal with a heat pump and natural gas backup. Did I get that right? Yeah, whether or not we need the natural gas backup. Yeah, we're, yeah. It, basically, um, the part of the other grant that we got two years ago looked at a couple of other options and we were moving forward with, um, with uh, one of the options, which actually is an all-electric option. Um, and since then, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act came out, which provides for 30% direct pay for um, GEO. And so we're going back to the engineer updating, you know, the costs, looking at um, a GEO option as well, because that may actually... Um, turn out to be more efficient than the um, VRF option that we were going to move forward with. And then the grant would pay for, um, you know, updating that engineering study, uh, paying a little bit for a project manager from the township, and um, probably cover, like, the, the first phase would be, like, the meeting room. That's the easiest one to do quickly. Um because in order to do the other two replacements, which are in the um, sort of the main office area, it's everything except the utilities addition that these three units serve. Um, uh, we really have to move out of Township Hall because the other issue is the duct work is not set up to deliver um, uh, code required outside air. Um, which is really, and that ventilation became, you know, an issue certainly during COVID and it, you don't want to replace a system that doesn't provide a healthy environment. So anyway, uh, I think it was about, the VRF system was about 360,000. Uh, 60, um, so about, you know, $120,000 a unit um with you know the duct work and so forth so um yeah rob question um during the budget meeting uh brandon talked about uh, the engineer guesstimate at the outset for budgeting mm -hmm. of 150,000 dollars and i just about coughed up a lung 
when I thought about $750,000 to heat and cool a building that size seems ungodly expensive. Yeah, I think he put in a lot of uh, padding on that because, um, but, but it, because the 360 doesn't include like moving out and leasing space for a couple months and that type of thing. I oh. don't think it's going to be that large. Um, okay. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you. And that there's grants to offset it. Um, what right. do you think the total offset will be uh, of the available grants? Um, well, we're applying for the four hundred the full 100,000. So I think I, I was working on the budget today. It was about uh, 60,000 of 60, you know, between 60 and 65,000 that the grant would offset. And then the other thing is with, if we go with a geo system, the direct pay is 30% um, for everything, the geo field, your heat pumps and your engineering design. So there might be a big benefit there. And I just, um, there is actually a new geotechnology out that has been used in um, some, um, quite a few Asian countries, but they're starting up some manufacturing in West Michigan, I guess. And um, it reduces significantly the amount of bores and things that you need. Mm. So. Yeah. And there there's a there are a couple different um bore systems anyway. Um so it it could be a very interesting project. Mm -hmm. So about 60,000 offset for the VF VFR system and about 30% direct pay for the geo system. Plus the 60. Oh, okay. So it applies yeah. to both. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff. Yes, as long as we were on the subject of energy. Yes. I just wondered if anybody was moving ahead with what Mary Gillis sent out about the Renewables Ready Communities Award. Yeah, that that's a big one because you got to do 50 megawatts. OK, 50 megawatts is a utility scale. I did forward that to the county because it would have to be a county uh, I think a countywide um, application and have uh, multiple townships um, uh, do that, consider doing that. Um, you know, SIO doesn't have parcels of land that would do anything more than like five megawatts, just to give you a, an idea of, of um, scale. You're, you're talking probably 400, 500 acres of of um, land to do that kind of that scale. Um, so that's what I was thinking is, you know, it might need to be a county lead to um, to do that kind of um, that kind of thing. Yeah. And the the payment, oh, I'm trying to remember, I did some calcs on what the payment because it's per per kilowatt or something like that. But oh, shoot, it'd be I think it was like 15 million it'd be somewhere around 15 million of an investment and you get maybe 3 million um to offset that you yeah know, that's the grant. maximum per project yeah right 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 so but the investment to do that you know you'd you'd have to get you know with it and plus right now it would have to be a utility so hmm. your partner would be dte mm-hmm mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, those were just, you know, some of the parameters around that. But it, I think that's a great idea because if you can get um, a bunch of folks doing the, you know, 50 megawatts, you're going to get, you're going to um, promote quite a bit of solar. And especially if you can, and, and they allow you to break it up, you know, it can be, you know, sprinkled all over. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, and I guess they got the city of Ann Arbor got some funding, additional funding for um, the landfill solar. So that may be going ahead. And that's a subscription. Um, they, I think they ran into difficulties in that um, when the, after they went through, they downsized it a little bit, but after they went through, it costs more than, you know, your normal power to subscribe to it and so that's a barrier um for a lot of people 
Yeah, that's what DTE started out. They're what they're calling their green currents now. Yeah. Started and now out it's... as more expensive, but now it's actually a little bit cheaper because of the rebates that they, they can do. Yeah. This. Yeah. 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 And um, I think part of that too is Ann Arbor challenged them because um they they're keeping the wrecks and and anyway, there was a little bit of a a a, a challenge to uh, how they were structuring that rate and they changed it. So that's, that's helpful. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing to notice um, I did send out and Rob, I, it didn't get in the packet. I, I asked Christy a, a, or Fran to upload it and also put it in the re ESTF uh, report for um, the planning commission. But I finally finished telling up, we had a meeting about priorities of the, um, SCAP plan. And um, it, it was, it was interesting. Um, and it was a whole, you know, a cross section of, of staff um, and uh, elected officials, um, you know, prioritizing what they thought were some of the more important things to move forward with. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, energy and benchmarking got like the most votes of anything. So, um, and I think that's more, you know, the immediate tangible actions that you can do with with energy. Um, and so um, we're certainly already kind of following that. So, but do take a look at those priorities. Each each um, each section had um, some tallies, and you can take a look at that. And that's in the planning commission agenda packet. Well, it'll be in this one, and it, I asked them to put it in the planning commission. I don't think they have have had yeah. time to upload it yet. Yeah, not yet. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um. Yep. So, um, let's see. Energy wise, energy wise. I'm just trying to think if there. I think that is all for energy. Um. The natural ecosystems and water folks, I did forward you the email. Um, the EPA is taking public comment on making Gelman a Superfund site. They're recommending to do that. And um, so if you if anybody wants to, you know, make their public comment, now's the time. Um, I'm I'm sure um uh, everyone would uh, appreciate some some positive um feedback on that. Um and then uh, the tree fund, uh, I'm hoping uh, the tree fund policy, um, we have a, a draft we met with, um, uh, let's see, Joyce and Will and um, Chris Chang and Anna um, before Anna left. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know, but Anna um, has taken a position with OHM as an mm -hmm. uh an ecologist. So um, they'll be looking for a new parks director. Um, but before she left, we were able to finish the draft for the tree fund policy. And this is using the um, funds that developers, if they can't um, mitigate all the trees that are required, um, this, they, they donate to this fund. And there's, Anna said 500,000. I thought it was closer to like between three and four, but you know, several hundred thousand dollars in there. And um, uh, uh, Jackie Couture was a part of the group, and we put together a matrix for the maximum impact. It, you know, impact of of where you know we should be planting these trees, and it came up as a um, actually trying to do reforestation, especially with some of the preserves um, that SIO has purchased. There are several of them that have, you know, uh, abandoned basically farm areas that were farmed that are no longer being farmed. And they're uh, next to contiguous tree canopies. So that would be the, that would be the first priority and other priorities would be um, parks and preserves have, um, there might be a grant fund for individuals um, that want to, um, but it would be, it'd be a, an advisory group to the uh, parks director who would actually each year come up with a specific plan um, for the use of the tree funds. And 80% would need to go into reforestation 
tend to maintenance of maintenance of of um, um, sio property trees, and then which whether either preserves parks, whatever um, public spaces, um, and then another ten percent that would be um, available for other types of programs, whether they be with HOAs or um, um, right of uh, street tree right of way um, enhancement or individuals. So that is going to, it has to get reviewed by PPP, the attorney, and then um, go on to the board of trustees. So um, the other thing that that also brought up was um, we probably have to update our own tree policy based on some of the challenges that um, Canton Township went through and lost um, with their, their um, tree mitigation program. So that may be another item that the Planning Commission has to do. But it's all good. And Norm um, has been working on our, our tree canopy um, information. And I don't know if you had a, ch a chance to look at that eye tree information. Briefly. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So that's kind of where that policy is going. Um, mobility. Um, Kathy, did you have anything that you wanted to report out on, on, on mobility? Not really. Right now, we um, we just got the newsletter article in, which I guess that's later, mm -hmm. um, which is really just a rehash, a restatement of the um, exact same things in those um, EPA or government mm -hmm. um, fire bureau, whatever, whatever it was, safety rules for electrical fires and so on. Um, other than that, I think the most important thing right now is keeping an eye on that transit millage and getting ready for the October um, event that we're having. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. nothing particular right now. Is Chris the one that's working on um, new things like the um, zoning requirements, zoning changes that would have to do with Required bicycle parking, electric. And that's going to be models. planning commission. Planning commission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and cool. right now we're doing. Uh, we do have that on our list. We're doing. Um, there's a work a group working on the Jackson Road corridor, mm -hmm. which also involves the PU the PUD ordinance, and then um, planning commission is working on solar first. And I forget it. We have a prioritized list, and th that'll be coming up shortly. Um, okay with with that yeah um yeah the the transportation village there's a committee working on um it, it's quite, sort of interesting it's with wave and uh, AAA TA um and uh one of the a couple things that have come up which is is interesting the um Jackson Road corridor AATA um route they're going to increase the frequency um you know, during the rush, well, kind of peak hours, weekends, and, <laughs> excuse me, um, and that's already in the works, um, which will be, I think will, will be helpful. Um, and then, but WAVE doesn't match it. So there's a, a little bit of a gap because the WAVE connect connectors and um, their fixed route it's the equivalent of every hour. So they're going to look at that, you know, to see how they can, you know, mesh that a little bit. And then also look at accepting transfers. So if you pay wave, you know, and you're going all the way downtown, you can get a transfer. You don't have to pay another fare and the same thing, you know, coming back, you know, just trying to make it easier for um, riders Going that through. that would be wonderful because the, the criticism I've heard from people is that and the fact that the timing does not line up. So if you get off the wave bus, you may have to wait a long time for the AAT bus or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Rob. Um, the mobility subcommittee might be very interested in the, the bus and transit committee, as you were just talking about, and they meet at two o'clock every other Friday. So mm -hmm. not this Friday, but next Friday. Um, and uh, 
and they've only met, I think this is was their third meeting, third. and mm -hmm. they're making very fast uh, progress, and it's vastly more complicated than I ever expected, but they're yeah. doing a good job. So that might be yeah. of interest. And and the other thing Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I just added there'll be some surveys going out to get feedback from riders, um, also employers and businesses. And uh, one of the things they did get some information, it's not going to be included in the millage. It's a different thing. But um, seeing if the DDA or certain employers would be interested in doing something like a go pass like Ann Arbor does. So some I think some really good things are coming out of it. And it's a chance for AATA and WAVE to really you know, look at, um, you know, working closely together. Yeah, what I wanted to say was, I have actually listened in to two of those three meetings. And, um, and I'm impressed by all the communication and how fast things are going. But I would also suggest it might be valuable to continue to have the same group of people, or at least many of them, meet occasionally, quarterly, every half year, or something to keep because I, I felt like they first realized, oh, we have no idea what these other people have been doing. And now they're beginning to talk together. Yeah, so. yeah kind of interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it'll be this group has a specific charge from the Board of Trustees. So, um, yeah. And I think the the goal, which is pushing it pretty fast, is to have a millage on the August ballot, which some people are you know, mm. a little concerned about meeting that deadline with enough outreach and so forth for, for the millage. Cause this is a, it's an important millage. And, and we know just to keep um, the um, more frequent Jackson road corridor things, there, there's going to have to be an increase in the millage. I mean, there, it, just because our, you know, what SIO has purchased from, AATA has gone up. So it, it you know, it, it, unless we cut back services, the millage will, will need to be um, slightly increased. So, okay. Uh, materials waste in the circular economy. Well, no real big news, but we uh, have reestablished communication with choice and will. A uh, little change in gears, uh, as uh, Jeff was pointing out, we're not real comfortable with GFL at this point as far as them doing this uh, drop-off station at Township Hall. I mean, maybe that's something we want to look at later. Uh, I also considered maybe reaching out to Recycle Ann Arbor, talk to Sean if they'd be interested in that, but I think I'd have a better chance of winning the lottery probably. <laughs> Uh, just based on previous conversations, I'd be surprised if they would want to do something there. Uh, but then again, if I don't ask, I guess the answer is absolutely none, no. So, uh, but we want to move more the direction of setting up that electronics recycling program. Uh, Jeff had a good idea. We probably should get another estimate in a sense. And it's a hard thing to estimate. And that's what will is looking for if we can give him some idea of what we think this will cost mm -hmm. uh, and i guess we'll have to review where we're at but that was one of the things that was until we ran one it was going to be really hard to see what that cost was going to be so it would have to be a rough estimate uh, i think it would be very popular based on what we saw happen at that dexter event uh, then i think the question is and will sort of open that up because in his email he mentioned to also budget for recycling events. Uh, shoe pan is just the electronics, but that's something maybe Jeff and I can talk about. Should we look at somebody that could do styrofoam and some other things? You know, Charlie, I was wondering if it made more, if it would make any sense to talk to Recycle Ann Arbor, not to do it at Township Hall, but to do it at the old Calvert site. That is where we were at one point. Mm -hmm. But then where we were disappointed in the last meeting we had with them, that seemed to have disappeared. And they were back really to this thing of doing this voucher system where where we were going there. But they had dropped the idea of having this like Saturday event at Calvert's. Uh, and, and that's why I think our chances of saying, well, would you do it at Township Hall is probably not real good if they don't want to do it at Calvert's. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure really the reason for that. 
<laughs> another surprise uh, is Sean said he wasn't interested in doing anything with Silo Farms. And I have no idea why. I maybe just need to ask him privately sometime. Did you have some communication that didn't go well or something? I, because he mm -hmm. didn't offer a reason, really. But he made mm -hmm. it very clear he was not interested in doing any kind of a, you know, a canister drop-off thing there. Uh, so I think what I might do, especially uh, now we have a new manager, too, and I've heard very good things about her. If I can get a minute to talk to her, because we in Sile Farms for our trash pickup had moved to Stevens. Mm. And I don't know, maybe you know, Jeff, does Stevens do any recycling also? I don't know. Yeah. The other thing is to talk to uh, Warma because they have those bids back now. And the rest of, you know, West Washington is going to choose someone. And Stevens, I think, was in that bidding. That's why I'm yeah, I'm thinking I saw something about that. Yes, that's why mm -hmm. I'm thinking that they do do some recycling. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'd like to talk to the manager to see if she could ask if they do. And would that be something they'd be interested in, in adding on? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, go through our warm reps. Um, you know, that might be even worth it, too. Because I'll tell you, Joyce is really booked as yeah. far as her yeah her time right. and what she's doing but you know i would maybe go through the um um there's tom off but who's the guy that does it? there's another Mark guy who, what yes yeah yeah i would definitely um uh, because all that's in they're going to be deciding they know you know what the rates were and 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 everything and if they're already going to be you know uh close by and doing a bunch of the other areas or if Stevens did recycling or, or something you could you could at least have some numbers too right and in, in the case of what we we're hoping to accomplish with that canister at Township Hall I mean one of the biggest service areas if people would use it potentially would be Sio Farms uh that's why if, if we could service them somehow directly we've taken a big bite out of what we want to do Right. And then they help manage it as opposed right. to, yeah. Yeah. Because the, yeah, town the township yeah. really can't really get involved directly anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not in this case. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a good, good spot. And there might be then, I don't know what other, um, because right now businesses, uh, multifamily aren't required to recycle in, in SIO. And so there might be, you know, some other opportunities for a, a company that provided, you know, both recycling and and trash. Right. Everybody contracts, you know, separately. So it might be, you know, something that you could, you know, work through. You know, we're doing this at Sio Farms, DDA, you know, here's some information, you know, and sort of, you know, promote it among um, other entities. Mm hmm I can't quite hear you, Jeff. Yeah, got some audio thing going, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Maybe zero out your uh, or stop your video, and then it might be a bandwidth thing. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very strange. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to add that. They will start up the styrofoam collection on Sundays at the Dexter Mill sometime in the spring. I forget exactly mm. when. But that has been going now for quite a while. That's where I take most of my styrofoam when I don't want to haul it all the way over to the drop-off center at Platt and Ellsworth. Mm. So that is one option. And the other big one is plastic bag collection. And there is a can uh, container for that at Dexter Township Hall, North Territorial. And if you go to Chelsea High School, that's actually where that bin ends up. It goes to Chelsea High School and they collect all that and then um, ship it downstream to, uh, to Trex. So we do have some options at the moment. Mm -hmm. It would no, be good to get those job. options um, on the website too. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna mention that. And also on the Dexter Mill, 
that's something you could take once they start that styrofoam at any time, as long as they're open. I forgot how that worked. Yes, you just show up and give them their styrofoam. And wow. uh, they'll they'll bust it up and bag it up. And they have a big trailer there. Got it. All go You'd have trailer. to be there like when they're open, correct? When they're during their yes. hours. Okay. Uh, it. It's at least now I'm trying to remember exactly, but it's like 10 to 2 or something like that on Sundays. When right. they start it back up, we can know we can know for sure. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's a great option. The, the other, another interesting angle we might have, and this is kind of just blue sky at the moment, but I'm also, I go to the Zero Waste Chelsea meetings and they have, or have had some zero waste boxes placed in strategic areas like uh, the Chelsea Library. They were collecting bathroom things like toothpaste containers and toothbrushes and that kind of thing through yeah. TerraCycle. We could do the same kind of thing. We don't really have a library, but you know, we could always put out a, a call for, hey, we're gonna we're gonna do a special project and bring these kitchen recyclables or bring your old Halloween costumes or this or that and put that all in a zero waste box and get that off the TerraCycle. So there's another thought we could do for extended specialty recycling. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I see on the chat the, the Dexter Mill, but it's not the Dexter Mill doing it. It's a, it's the uh, Dexter Township clerk, Michelle, and it's actually her, her company's trailer. And so wow. they're they're doing that as just a community outreach, community service kind of thing. It's it's not really associated with extra mill. So it's Sundays for a few hours. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other one, this is sort of a, I didn't put egg on here. Oh, there I did. Okay. Um, the, the other thing that was sort of an interesting, um, there's a, an MDARD and this has to do with the composting site. There's an MDARD grant that's going to be coming out that um, I just overheard Ann Arbor is, is thinking about um, they have to rebuild the building at the farmer's market. And they were thinking of applying for this grant to create sort of like an electric demo kitchen and do some other, uh, other things. Um, but um I I was thinking maybe the MDAR grant, if, you know, SIO, and I know, Elizabeth, you went out and talked to Mike, right? Vestigard a little bit. Um, you know, there might be a really interesting partnership that, you know, if SIO did something, Vestigard did something, Project Grow did it, um, and maybe the county kicked in, you know, some you know, some of their, you know, composting staff and et cetera, you know, it might be something we could pull together. Yeah, I think what Mike what wanted, we were... oh, sorry. So, uh, that's what we were pitching when I gave that presentation about Gibbs House, mm -hmm. Jan, a couple of weeks ago. And Tim followed up and said, Mike is open to the idea mm -hmm. and that he has not heard anything from Project Grow. That may change, but Tim said he hadn't, mm -hmm. that Mike hadn't heard anything further from Project Grow at the time. Mm -hmm. But he's welcome here. He's he's open to the idea of us coming in and doing something. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he talked to me about was trying to reduce runoff on his property, especially where the cattle graze. And so he knows that there's an issue and I, believe it's not the new property near Liberty. I believe it's the older property mm -hmm. near Turner's. So I, he's working a number of different angles. Um, but I think um, he's, he's twisting his hands a little bit about the complexity of some of these granting organizations, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which we all do, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just, I'll keep an eye and see, I know it's supposed to come out 
soon, like, but I hopefully I'll hear from the city of Ann Arbor when it comes out and we can <laughs> we can be their competition. Um, but um we'll see. Uh all right. Um haven't heard anything um from from Andy on resilience um recently. Um let's see. Oh, the other thing on food and egg is the 20th of of April, they're gonna do kind of an Earth Day at the farmers market. They're gonna have some like sustainable food um business type events and tabling and and so forth so um i'll share once they get more of that together um the city has hired a really nice and uh, energetic um person to run their um you know sort of their local food system um goals um so that that's sort of what what she's working on and so tag along with that for sure. Um, all right. Um, can I, can I yeah. just, um, I just happened to, it came in today's mail and you have probably already seen it anyway, but um, just noticed that Eagle was doing some kind of a, of a webinar in on April 9th about um, coping with results of increasingly large storms. And I don't know if that was something we should recommend or spread around. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and actually, I did send that to um, uh, Chief Hood and and to Terry too. Okay. I assume they're getting those emails, but probably yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else from the different groups? Right. Um, then I just wanted actually to... sorry oh, I couldn't ahead. find the mute button. Hi Chris. Hi. Hey. Um, I put together and this is my personal time wasn't necessarily um, a task for the transportation subcommittee, but I have a a spread a long running spreadsheet that I've uh, worked on over the years to share with coworkers and friends that compares the total cost of ownership of EVs, electric vehicles. And I, I recently updated it with all of the EVs currently on the market uh, that are less than $55,000. I excluded the super expensive vehicles, but I'll, I'm just mentioning this, I'll, I'll share it with the group. And if you're at all considering purchasing, purchasing an EV, you can take a look at it. Would this be something that m might be a resource to put on the website at all? Uh, yeah, I, th I think it would absolutely be helpful. I can, I have it up if you want to um, mm -hmm. see what I'm describing real quick. Sure. But yeah, it could, it could definitely go on the website. I'll tell you what, take a look at it. And um, if you, if you think it's valuable, then maybe we could consider putting it on the website. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Um, yeah, the other thing, I mean, you know, we're, we're, um, you know, we did our, you know, we did the fire, um, sort of article, um, that'll be coming out. We, um, Tim also did a nice write up on honeybee and the agriculture, um, that they're doing there with some photos. Um, and had, I guess he said it was a really nice chance to talk to, it was Deb and I'm trying to remember her, um, the other person there, but just, you know, what they're trying to do and so forth. And he, he was so convinced he was going to try some at, you know, skinny farm, um, doing some of that, um, ergoculture. So hopefully, um, it does look a little messy. Um, but once things start growing on it, I think it'll be, it, it'll be very, it'll be a very interesting um, example of a different type of composting. Um, so, and then I did a, um, a, a little uh, article on native plants. Most of that was taken from um, Huron River Watersheds information on, on native plants and just all the different ways that you can support 
you know, pollinators from the trees you plant to native plants and, and so forth. So it focused on stormwater, reduction of turf grass and supporting pollinators. Um, so hopefully there was room for all of that <laughs> in the in the newsletter. Um, so we can, um, you know, the we can start, you know, kind of thinking about um, the summer articles ju is June 10th. We definitely want to um, talk about, that'll be our opportunity to talk about the sustainability fair in October. Um, but we can, you know, think about some of the other topics we want to um, do. And maybe, you know, Chris, maybe one of those EV articles, you know, with this, you know, we can do a QR code um, that would link to the, you know, your your research on the website. And that also ties in with the, the um, you know, the EV group that'll be joining us uh, in October. Sure, absolutely. I'd be happy to, mm -hmm. to write an article. And just to give you some more background, part of the motivation uh, for me putting this together was to help illustrate that there are actually a lot of affordable EVs uh, available to now. So I was, I was just counting mm -hmm. and there's four, like for example, there's four EVs less than $30,000 in the $20,000 range and you know, 10 below 40 and a dozen below 50. So um, hopefully it'll combat that perception that EVs are uh, much necessarily much more expensive than conventional cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, neat. Yeah, that's cool. Um, very nice. So, okay, so hopefully we'll get some good feedback on the, the newsletter articles. Um, we are, as far as I know, uh, moving ahead with um, uh, the Native Plant Workshop on June 1st, which is a Saturday, running it from like 10 to 12. And um, that's going to be Mike Apple is going to do um, sort of a demonstration of, you know, how you plant plugs. Also, um, cause what was happening with the, <laughs> let's see, Chief Hood calls it the solar park uh, restoration. <laughs> um, and so we're going to be doing native plant plugs um, between the parking area and the, the solar array. And then there's a seed mix um, that is designed because a lot of solar arrays, they've just put like gravel underneath them. And this is a specific seed mix that's um, what they're going to do is they'll kill all the grass. Um, uh, and this is from sort of the front of the solar array all the way back um, to the behind the storage barn, if you, you're familiar with the, the fire station layout. And they're gonna do a specific seed mix underneath the solar array, and then more of a general prairie mix um, uh, all the way around uh, back to the, the, the storage barn. So um, the planting workshop is just gonna be at, with the plugs and we're hoping to get enough volunteers to um, you know, do the planting. And uh, Mike is gonna rough up you know, the soil a little bit. So it'll be easier to, to um, plant um, the plugs. And, you know, if we have, you know, 10 people, um, that's going to be plenty, but you can, you know, if we have 30, it's going to be a really short planting time. So, um, and it might be, um, I don't know if it's, if we're, we're able to, because that's kind of peak season for, <clears throat> feral flora or somebody, but it'd be nice to get someone, you know, who actually does the, the um, sells the plants, maybe to have some, um, you know, flats or something available if people want to purchase. We'll just have to see if we can work that out. But I think just the variety that we'll be putting in, um, in front of the um, solar array will be, uh, there'll be enough to, you know, get people excited about um, how easy it is to change your, to reduce your turf. <laughs> no. Yeah, go ahead, Elizabeth. Uh, Jan, you said that was on June 1st from yeah. 10 to 12? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, got it. Thank you. Yep. yep. Yeah, and we'll, we'll probably have to get, you know, some emails out too. Um, it'll be in the newsletter 
um, but there's obviously a gap of, of time between that and June. Um, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't have any more updates on the sustainability fair other than we are planning it for the October 6th and we'll just, uh, I'm going to find out how much it's going to cost to rent like a 30 by 40 tent. Um, and that'll be the size that we'll have to deal with for the tabling. We can probably have a few more little pop-up tents. You know, we had that one eight by eight and I think the cycling folks brought an eight by eight tent. Um, there might be some other folks that can bring some eight by eights, um, you know, to sort of expand that um, area a bit. Um, and that's probably, uh, I'll get out the, um, Probably after our June, <laughs> our June, our, our June event, we can start digging into the specific plans. But I think every almost everyone who participated last year, um, you know, will want to come back. And there was the the bicycle repair folks that wanted to participate. Um, and we might want to think a little bit more about, um, you know, some other um, you know, October 6th is, isn't at the end time of farms, but they still may be kind of busy, but maybe we can get a couple more farmers to participate too. Should be cool. Okay. Um, the SCAP list. Um, yeah, I just wanted everyone, it, it went out, you know, obviously you haven't had a chance to really look at it. Um, a couple things that I wanted to say was um, the people that participated um are listed in the email but it was basically um you know a, a good cross section of folks and it, people didn't most of the folks did like a 1 2 and 3 rating of uh the things that they thought uh were worthwhile to pursue soon um a couple um there was one person that just did like these are my the highest priorities to get done as soon as possible, you know, this year if possible. Um, so it, not everyone, you know, filled it out exactly the same. A couple people um, almost ranked every single thing, every single um, priority. So not, not quite even, but you can, I did, I kept the distribution of votes. So you could see where a lot of people voted versus the ones where just a few people did, where there was really consensus that this is a very high priority and you know the other ones that were more scattered. So um, it, it provides a little bit more data um, for that. And you know it's, it's kind of it is kind of interesting um, that I have to say our fire chief is, is so go with, energy and EVs and electrifying the fleet and so forth. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, we're really fortunate to have someone like that. Um, have to work a little bit harder with our, our, um, our utility staff and so forth, but they, um, we met when we met on the, on the grant and tried to decide what, you know, energy project to do. Um, they really got excited about, um, you know, moving to, uh, if possible, an all electric system. So, um, you know, a little education goes a long way. All right. Um, Semcog. Not really anything new. Um, right now, I think Semcog is very busy figuring out what their spread of projects they're going to present to um, the EPA is mm -hmm. going to be. And Starting in April, we'll, we'll start meeting on more of a long-term climate action plan. So that's where okay, we are. Good. Oh, neat. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, this is sort of, it isn't really tied in. This is more resilient Washtenaw, but um, the, there's a Seas Masters project team that is finishing up their um, uh, master's project and they're putting together kind of a um, sustainable energy management toolkit for municipalities. And they're gonna be doing a webinar 
and we're going to try and do it. And this is the 2030 district is going to kind of take it along with um, Resilient Washtenaw once they get their resilience officer in place. Um, and, you know, uh, this is there's there's the Mo Michigan Green Communities, which are municipalities. Oh, I for totally forgot that we have to look at the Michigan Green Communities thing and just and um, actually go through it and see if we want to register for the challenge because I think we've got a bunch of stuff done. Um, and I don't know if there are a couple people in this group that would be willing to look at that. Um, it's a, it, it, it's, it's basically a, um, you know, sustainability climate action plan tasks and you can check off the ones that you've done and register for the challenge. And then you get, um, if you reach a certain level, you actually get a felt, you can get a fellow for the summer um, and some other resources and be part of, you know, a group that um, shares um, uh, kind of leads in um, sustainability actions uh, to share with other municipalities. So that I I did I neglected to put that on, and we really do need to get to that list. I don't know if there's anyone that's, um, you know, I'd be glad to help out. I just need I just can't, don't want to do it all myself because it's a it's a pretty big document. Um, but I think we've done quite a bit. And we we just need to go through that and decide if we need to if we're going to register for the challenge and probably should do that this month sometime between now and our next meeting. Can we Anybody do it by e email, like send it out to us, and mm -hmm. so we can look at it and respond back by a certain date sure. or something? Yeah, I can give you guys a, a link to it, and yeah. yep, we'll do that. Okay, good, um, because we might as well get some recognition, right? <laughs> um, all right, and I think SEMCOG's gonna be um, making some grants available too um, with some of their funding. So there might be some other ways we can get some, some funds um, to do some of the things that, that we wanna do. Um, okay, uh, then just going back to public comment, anyone have anything they want to add or? Three things. Yes. Uh, on the HVAC, when you talked about direct pay, what exactly does that mean? Is that like a rebate? Yeah, that's, um, it's for, um, municipalities and nonprofits, um, any, um, for-profit entity can get a 30% tax credit from right. um, right. the government. And so they made, with the Inflation Reduction Act, they made a, there's a process that um, municipalities and houses of worship and public schools and so forth uh, can access that. And it's a, they, the government actually pays you 30% of your investment. So you can do that with solar and you can do that with geo. Gotcha. Makes perfect sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just sort of a little FYI thing on April 8th at about 312 in the afternoon, there is going to be an eclipse south of Toledo. Um, I'm taking mom and some friends and we're going to go uh, have some lunch and then uh, see the full eclipse in about half an hour south of Toledo. <clears throat> and this group might be interested in that kind of thing. And then yeah. lastly, Kathy, I apologize. Of course you were at the bus and train. <laughs> I saw you there. My, my only excuse is I'm a goldfish and my memory is 30 seconds long. So, <laughs> I understand. Um, sure. and, and Rob, I, I, have, I have booked um, a motel room for the night before and the night after the eclipse in Wapakoneta, Ohio. So, oh, perfect, so, perfect, perfect. Good yes. Yes. I knew this was the group to talk to. Yep. <laughs> no oh, that's great. That's great. Oh, all right. Um, then just our next meeting is the 4th of April. I will get out that Michigan Green Communities thing. Um, does everyone want it? Um, or are there some volunteers who want to go through it? Um, 
I suppose it doesn't, it's fine. I can send it out to everyone and then you can just respond whether you're interested in being a part of it because there are different areas. So we could break it up. You know, if we had three or four people, you know, we could go through it and say, yeah, I think we've done these things. Um, it, it would make the task go a lot faster if, if we mm -hmm. had a group of three or four, I think. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll send that out. Um, and then, you know, it's really uh, June 10th is our next newsletter uh, deadline. So we probably, you know, can, you know, the next, um, for sure by May 2nd, we need to have, you know, the type of articles that we want to do and volunteers to, uh, to write them. Hopefully we can get some good pictures at the native plant workshop to put in the newsletter too, as a, a follow-up. All right. Any any other announcements? Things going on that people want to share? All right. With that, then. Hey. Oh, Jeff, you unmuted. Yes, we have to approve the minutes yet. Oops. Totally forgot that. And Sorry. I have a correction. Oh, right. Uh, with all due respect to Mr. Greenberg, I was the one who pointed out that it was National Dark Chocolate Day. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Any other corrections or revisions? How did I jump over the minutes? Hmm. All right, all those in favor of approving the minutes with the correction about Jeff versus John? Say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right. With that, uh, any other comments? All right. Then, hey, we'll see you next month. And uh, with that, we're adjourned. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.